Hey, uh, welcome back to uh, this video series that we're experimenting with for the next little while here called The Songs That We Pray. Um, if you want a little bit more detail about uh, what's really behind it, you can check out the preamble to last week's video, which is uh, Behold Him by Paul Baloche. But essentially, it's just us kind of taking a look together at the lyrics uh, behind uh, the songs that we sing here in gathered worship at Moncton Wesleyan Church and how their prayers and what sorts of things we pray together because of them. So this week's song is uh, a new one called Graves Into Gardens. Uh, it's quite new actually. It uh, was just released earlier on this year and we were kind of early adopters on it. Uh, we've been doing it here for just about two months now. And fun fact, the first time that we did it was with uh, kind of an acoustic trio up front. So uh, you had me on mandolin and you had uh, Robin Downey on the acoustic guitar and we had our friend Reed Govan playing ukulele. Possibly the only time that ukulele has really featured uh, strongly in corporate worship here at Moncton Wesley. Now this song is largely one of testimony. It's a, like a first person account of someone who was searching the world for meaning in many different places and then ultimately found it in Christ. It's a great story for us to rehearse uh, for those of us who have found ultimate meaning in Christ. It's, it's really important for us to regularly acknowledge the, uh, you know, I once was lost, but now I am foundness of our existence, lest we forget our need and our rescue. The chorus of the song is a really simple refrain that kind of says over and over again, there's nothing better than you, God, which is a sentiment that is just so common throughout the Psalms, it's kind of amazing. I mean, here's just a few different examples. You know, I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. And better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. The bridge of this song, though, is where I'd love to just spend a few minutes to camp out. The imagery is just, it's so evocative and it's so scriptural. You know, you turn mourning into dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. And you turn seas into highways. I mean, that's just coming right out of the Exodus story, the parting of the Red Sea. But the central metaphor, the title metaphor even, you know, you turn graves into gardens, is not necessarily pointing to any one passage of scripture, but a recurring theme that we see throughout the Bible. All of it being rooted ultimately in the death and resurrection to new life of Jesus Christ. And that theme is that death is the way to real and lasting life. And this is exemplified in the passage of scripture from which we get this line, you turn bones into armies. It's from Ezekiel 37, one to 14. I'm gonna read just a little bit of it here. Ezekiel was a, a prophet who was around during the sixth century BCE when Israel was in captivity in Babylon. There's a bunch of really wild visions that he had. And this one from chapter 37, he was lifted in the spirit. It was plopped in the middle of a valley and it was full of bones. And the Lord led me back and forth among them, he says. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. And he asked me, son of man, can these bones live? And I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. But then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life and then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, like a, a rattling sound and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. And then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath 
entered them. They came to life and they stood up on their feet, a vast army. Church, of all the amazing things that we read here, what stands out to me the most is that though God is all powerful and doesn't need anything, it's not he who speaks to the dry bones, but it's the prophet Ezekiel who's invited, not to merely say what he thinks they should say, but what he knows that God is calling him to say. And in the process of obeying his voice, man, stuff happens. Church, that is what we get to do when we come together in prayer and worship. We don't just speak out our opinions or our desires, but we speak the very word of God. We speak it to him and we speak it to and over each other. And in doing so, we build each other up and we become inspired. There's, there's breath and spirit inside us. We become inspired to move out into a world that desperately needs his presence. Yes, he is the only one who can, but he has invited us, you and I, to be a part of the process of turning graves into gardens.